Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Five years ago, the Power of We Symposium was created to provide a platform for kids from all sectors where they could have a safe and comfortable environment in which to share both their joys and concerns. The Power of We Symposium is proud to have served over 250 kids throughout Romania when we took our mission global back in May of 2023. Now, two teams of amazing volunteers from both the U.S. and Romania embarked on an eight-day Legacy of Hope tour, bringing encouragement and hope to not only the kids of Romania, but also the adults who support them, and also to over a hundred kids here in the U.S. who contributed handwritten letters of hope to our Romania mission of 2023. Now, this year, we are proud to provide this opportunity yet again in October, and we are super excited to up our game. New venue, 750 kids this time, and we want to see you there. We're looking forward to meeting you in person at this year's event, which promises, as always, incredible speakers, amazing content, and, of course, some of the greatest kids on the planet. So, mark your calendars for October 24th, and we'll see you here in Chicagoland for the Power of We Symposium 2024. This year's theme is Always Together, Never Alone. Tickets are available now on Eventbrite or at powerofwesymposium.com. Now I know when something happens in our lives that is unexpected, you you go, you have to go into it in order to ever have any hope of coming through it. So when you go, guess what? When you come out the other side, you grow. brought out more in me than I thought that I, I didn't even know that I had. That has given all of us a great hope for what we can do with our own messages, our abilities to deliver, but most importantly, to deliver it in an authentic and very, very intriguing way. Have you ever been in something or felt something where the only way you felt you could deal with it was to leave, get away? I thought that was the meaning of control. It took me four and a half years to stop looking around the room of my life, of my journey, of my purpose, digging in cushions for a remote that never existed. Looking, relooking, going back and upgrading, bringing in and pulling out things that do not serve you must go. Those things out in this world that are designed to bring us down, to keep us down, put their foot on our neck and whisper to us that we're never good enough, they don't whisper. They yell at us from all directions, top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, side to side, corner to corner, corner to corner, 365 days. When somebody asks you about yourself, don't you dare whisper. When they ask you to raise your hand, don't you dare half raise it. When they ask you something good about you, you scream it with all you have. Come on now, get up, get up. Tell me who you are. Show me, show me who you are. greatest truth of all, 
that not everyone has to remain lost. Monday. I haven't seen you guys live since Friday, but I'm back now and you're here. We're here. Why is that so important to me? Well, for the same reason it should be important to you because first and foremost, the fact that we're both here, just you and me, we have enacted, we have opened the spigot to spiritual goodness because there's a promise that guarantees us that wherever two or more of us, when we get together and we agree and we're like pouring to me, I'm going to pour to you. Let's get out and ease some suffering in the world. Y'all know what happens spiritual magic. That's right. That's right. So listen, I am so happy to be back. Where was I? Where was I? I went to Savannah, Georgia. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Oh my God. It reminded me, you know, it reminded me, I thought, am I in Charlotte? I mean, not Charlotte. What's that place in North Carolina that everybody loves? Is it not Charlotte, the other one? Lord Jesus, is that a senior moment? I don't care. I'm glad to be a senior. I didn't think I was going to get to be a junior for many years, many decades. I'm glad to be 61, almost 62. Can I, can I get an amen? Yeah, there's one. Add to it if you want. Let me tell you something about being happy where you are and happy who you are. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Because when you are and you pour into people on a daily basis, they will add their prayers to your journey. They will add their prayers to your journey. So anyway, I was here. At the NYAR, the National Youth Advocacy and Resist. What a beautiful conference. Great job. They did a wonderful job. Where are my manners? Good morning, beautiful people. They did a great job. I can't wait uh, for next year. Anyway, I'll tell you more about that later in the week because I want to get our guests in here. First of all, if you've never been here, welcome, welcome. God bless you for uh, coming in today. Um, that's the Bella Purpose. It's a real thing. It's not a gimmick. It's not a prop. It's a reminder. It's really an opportunity. Why? Because we're so busy, but we should never be so busy that we miss the truth. Now, the truth, as far as I know, the only thing in the universe that never changes and will never change on you. So I don't want you to miss it. So when there's something out there, I'm like, did y'all catch that? Ooh, the bell. That's that. Okay. And also at this time, welcome my sis, sidekick. She's been here for seven years. We're in our eighth year together because I love me some Lucy. Sure do. Ain't shame either. Mm -mm. So there we go. No more announcements because I'll get them. I'll spread them out between tomorrow. I still think it's Monday because I was gone. That's weird. I never go places to speak on, not usually on a Monday, but I did this time. So um, this young lady who's here, Janine Letford, she keynoted at the ECOC. Uh, and I met some people this weekend from that, but they weren't at the conference and they live in Colorado. Really? How y'all miss that? You live there. But anyway. Um, and they really missed out because she did an incredible keynote. 
Um, but I'm going to show something that just came out. I'm going to share with you guys uh, where she was. She will speak anywhere. <laughs> I mean, I will, too. Don't get it twisted. But um, one thing I can say I've never done. I've never uh, spoke at a zoo. Have you? Oh, my God. Now I have Dr. Seuss playing behind me today. So, you know, I'm going to try to rhyme every damn thing. But just be glad that I ain't going to sing. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. See how quick I can lie? Oh, I'm just saying. Intercultural creativity. And don't try to steal it because she, uh, she done, uh, paid for it. So don't be trying. Oh, that's a good name. It is good enough for her to register it. Look at this. The Maryland Zoo uh huh, in Baltimore. Take a look, you guys. Take a look. Baltimore, and it's been a pleasure giving them intercultural creativity and neurosomatic creativity training for the staff. We talked about perspective shifting and looking at the diversity diamond. So we're going to use them in our work with Your tool number one for shifting perspective in order to connect with people from different lives and backgrounds. Uh, we had an amazing time. It was really great to learn different strategies and how to acknowledge issues, but also take something with us and learn how to uh, deal with them head on in our daily lives created uh, self-awareness and um, just how we all can work together uh, to not only make our organization better, but to also be uh, mindful of the people that we actually coach, work hand in hand with every day. Because she has the background of her profession that I'm not in, my brain has now opened up the mind map to her experience. Basically, my brain shifts to say, okay, well, what's it like being her on the day to day doing this? And I also was able to work with the leadership directly. And we talked about prismatic leadership and shifting perspective and what leadership looks like in this future of work. You understanding your innate assumptions are, are huge. Um, I'm hoping that this training definitely, I'll say, sparks conversation here. Um, so I think we have a good foundation. Um, I think this training will definitely help me outside of work. Um, but also definitely here working with the team and different departments and everything. So I enjoy trainings like this. It forces people to think, you know, past the surface level. So I just want to thank Maryland Zoo for having a cafe strategies, bring this new unique training to your staff. Your zoo is beautiful. And thank you for being such a staple in this community. They have the largest penguin collection in the U S the second largest in all of the world. Uh, this was one, one of our first steps towards um, being creative, talking about diversity, talking about inclusion. Um, and I think uh, from what I saw today that everybody was um, very impressed. Okay, I want to get, you're in here now. You're in here now. So, hey, welcome to the show. How are you? I am blessed to be here. I'm just, I'm up and ready. How are you? I'm awesome. Less than highly favored, living in Dominion, just yes. like you. And you, and you, and you, and you. So what was it like? Uh, do you know I didn't even go to a zoo until five years ago for the first time? I, I was 55 years old. So oh. it's six years ago. Yeah. I'd never oh, been wow. to a zoo. It was incredible. My husband took me. He took me <laughs> to the zoo. We went that same day. So what was your favorite thing about that experience we just saw? And then, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the, the research that I do, it's really getting people to shift perspective and to connect with one another. And people who work with animals, you have to connect with the animals and animals don't speak English. So you have to use other skills mm. in order to read the cues, in order to look at um, behavior, in order to be aware of patterns. And so it was great working with people who either work with animals or work around animals because I was using some of their skill sets that they already had to shift um, to into their personal and work uh, relationships. So that that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I see on the screen, prismatic leadership, trademark, registered trademark. You make sure don't buy it. Ain't nobody take it. <laughs> Use it if you want to. It's, it's, right. You better get permission. Right. <laughs> so let me, I'm. here's what I want to do. Um, because 
I thought that was a great video. It was a great way to kind of tell what you do, but I want you to fill in between the lines. So I'm going to dip out for about 60 seconds and let you just create a vibe, say hello, pour into this audience um, in the manner in which you feel will help ease some suffering in here today. And then I'm going to come back and um, we'll start the line of questioning. Where were you on the night of? I'm kidding. Go ahead. All you. Well, I have a diamond and this is the logo of my company and I use it for a reason because I want everyone to understand that they are a diamond, that they are meant to shine bright. And just like a diamond, when you walk out into the sun, you are actually surrounded by rainbows, but you don't see them unless you have a prism, right? And a prism acts as a diamond, water acts as a diamond, uh, just glass and just things that can separate the color frequencies. And so I teach with metaphor on purpose. Number one, the brain loves it. And yes, I do have a natural brain. I travel with this as well. And I teach uh, through metaphor because the brain loves it. The brain loves story. The brain loves uh, connecting the abstract to the tan tangible, right? But I want people to understand that they are prismatic, right? They Great leaders are prisms. They're able to look within themselves and within, and within others and see the beautiful hidden colors there, the reds of, of boldness, the, the greens of creativity, the yellows of love and, and the purples of, of compassion, and they're able to draw them out. And so we're just asking people to work on their prismatic mm -hmm. leadership and their, their skills of, um, of this time. It's fun work, fun work. <laughs> Did you hear your theme song in the background? Oh, yes, I, I was playing. I love it. Thank you. I'm writing like a diamond. <laughs> so I think it's awesome. Now, I don't even know. I'm going to just keep real. I don't even know where to start with you. You do so many things. I'm not kidding. Let's go back first and talk about origin story. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I always believe, you know, if we want people to listen to us enough, you know, people want to know. You know, what you've been through, yeah. you know, how'd you get here? Why is this your passion? Why is this so important to you? See, this is how people understand, because a lot of people don't know this, Janine. I'm sure you do, but a lot of people don't know this. They don't know the difference between a job and a calling. You know, mm -hmm. you've heard it. That job is that thing you get paid for, but you're calling. What is it? It's that thing you were made for. So let's, and that's how you get there, by following all the clues and all the slabs of the sidewalk of life until you get to the corner. You go, oh, so that's what this intersection of life is all about. So if you wouldn't mind, where'd you get started? Where you? Where were you born and raised? Tell us a little bit about your family dynamic. What did you think you were going to do when you were little, Janine? What did you think you'd be doing today? Well, I knew I was called to teach from an earl earlier age. My mother was an educator. I'm from Los Angeles, California, raised in San Bernardino area. Did it, oh. did it a few few years in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, I did a few years in New Orleans, but uh, mostly Southern California near Route 66, right? And did you get um, your kicks there? Uh, yes. And I was just in Oklahoma doing training with um, with an indigenous tribe and I went on Route 66 in Oklahoma. I'm like, it's the same street. How awesome. So wait a minute. You were with an indigenous tribe and then you were with the zoo. Yes. <laughs> you have to tell us how you get all these unique opportunities. Where yes. you go, go, where you, uh, Next thing, hi, I'm Janine Leffert, and I'm broadcasting this this speech from space. Yes. You'll be right. Watch, watch it. Girl, well. and went up in space. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be surprised. Go ahead. Finish your story. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and then uh, just I'm a twin, but I grew up with a speech impediment, believe it or not. Uh, speech therapy all through elementary and couldn't even say my name fluently. Mm. And that really just did did a number on my identity. I have a twin sister, one speech debates, beautiful girl, brilliant. But it was just, you know, when you're a twin, you're even more just, you know, compared. And, you got all the right. We have yes. twins in our family. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, when a calling calls you and sometimes, like you said, looking back, you get to see the clues that were placed and you get to kind of make sense of them more. Mm -hmm. And I was just I just loved my mother set us up for music. And so music actually became my first voice, you know, and I played the trumpet. Um, I even did a little bit of dancing and then theater. I realized that when I memorized lines and practiced them using my body, mm -hmm. I stuttered less. And so it was these clues, you know, 
that saying, um, having a having arts in my life actually gave me my voice. And the work that I'm doing now, it's basically based with that. It's intercultural creativity, but neurosomatic creativity. How do we teach leadership skills through the arts? And it was it's amazing because looking back, the arts basically, I don't I don't want to say saved my life, because you know, I had a decent I had a good good childhood and everything. My mother was very supportive supportive family, but the arts saved my voice. It saved my identity of knowing that I have a creative gift to offer and the world would want to hear it, even though I could not speak fluently and I still stutter. Like you'll you'll hear it. Um, you know? Yes. I yes, never I heard stutter. you stutter yet. I stuttered on stage when you first saw me. I, I still stutter, I didn't even but I, I use different things to, uh, to, to, to lower it. Oh, wow. How interesting. Hey, I, I'm like, you know, I kind of, it's different, but, it's, but in a way it's the same. I'm talking about my ADHD. Um, I remember when they were, I was told it was a, a disability, um, or could be, um, and then I found out, wait a minute, that's where my superpower is. And it, it, for real, it really is. So I think, you know, a little bit about that as well. Right. Yeah. But I want to ask you this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, and that's what we, you and I, seem to be trying to uh, to train or 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 develop people in opening their observation, the things that look obvious or a certain way to you framed, right? I talk about psycho, psycho, psychological frames, right? Yeah. How how we frame situations may not be obvious or may look something else. So I was ashamed of my stutter. And I realized that I could have wrote about this for scholarships. You know, I left so much money on the table. Yeah. Because I didn't share this story because I was ashamed of it. Like who who wants to come out and say, you know, oh I I I stutter. I can't school, talk, you you know? Know, stutter it. You know, <laughs> hey, let me fill in, get your quota. You know, <laughs> right. I get it. You don't want it like that. Yeah. You don't want it like that. You want to you want it based on the things that you know everyone else is judged on, I would think. But let me ask you this. So what about um, bullying and that sort of thing? Uh, I'm sure you must have encountered it from because kids can be cruel. They can be cruel. So how do you think that has affected the work you do today? Well, it it allows it's it allows you if you have a good you know social networking, good uh, co coping stra strategies to realize, um, especially now, that oh, ev even you know even if it happens it's an external force so i get to decide how i respond to it you know and even with my work with intercultural creativity and cultural uh, development you know it I, I see that it's a continu continuum that's what i teach that people are on a continuum of developing their their cultural uh, awareness that people are different people who are coming in with, with the different um, schemas and frames and so if I encounter someone that says something, you know, rude or negative or even ist, right, racist or, or sexist or, or whatever, I'm like, oh, wow, that person is probably a little bit lower on the development continuum because they, they really haven't um, opened their mind and understand uh, that people have di different experiences, you know, and if you're not exposed to someone with um, an alternative you know, ability or, or a different lens, your brain will automatically default to just, you know, the unknown or fear or, or bullying or something just to separate them into an, an other, you know, the in and out group, the brain does that automatically because of survival reasons, but great leaders and developed people in their cultural development know how to mitigate that. Right. Mm -hmm. And say, okay, well, what is my brain doing? So with bullying, uh, just, you know, I was very shy and quiet. You know, I did have my twin sister. So there was that dynamic, you know, we, we, I did have always some, someone, but I just understand, especially in my adulthood, that, okay, you know, number one, what they say has no effect. I think Ray, Ray, Ray Charles said that, and Quint, Quincy Jones said this, you know, my self-worth has no basis upon what you, you think. Mm -hmm. And I heard, heard that a long time ago. And once you really internalize that, like yeah. who I am as a person is not um, uh, fluctuating compared on what your opinion is of, of me. Um, but, but that's, you know, not every child has that, especially early on in life. You have to grow in, in, into to that. Uh, but it's just, you know, 
finding things that I was successful at, finding things that say, you know what, I am, I, track and field for me was a big one. I was like, I'm, I'm fast. And I ended up being number six in the state of California in long, long jump. Uh, but it's, oh. it's actually where people, you know, really started to look up to me and look to me for mentorship and guidership. So I think once I found I got to ring the bell because that was, that was, that was a good one. You slipped that one in there so good. <laughs> oh, and by the way, don't get it twisted. When I say fast, <laughs> don't mean quick, speedy. I mean fast, flow yes. your fast. Okay, now we got but that, but that's important. I came back to that because that is usually a natural ability can be sometimes the first and then only step that it takes mm -hmm. for you to wander into shadow work, which you know, if you you know what I'm saying, and and it's really important. I want to ask you something though, because it's on my mind. I wrote it down. I'm wondering if it's the same thing, and the, the terms just got, uh, you know, refreshed, so to speak. So you mm -hmm. said neurosomatic. Okay. I remember, you know, back when I was your age, a hundred years ago, um, I heard the term psychosomatic. Is that the same thing? Well, if I split up the words. Um, in the etymology, psycho means the mind, right? Um, right. Uh, the Greek the neuro word, means but the brain. brain. Yes. So Which is mind, not the same as the mind? My Well, no, the mind and the brain are, are two different things. They're there connected. They're two, uh -huh. two, 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 two different things. And I actually trademark neurosomatic creativity. I don't have neurosomatic because there's like neurosomatic flow, neurosomatic intelligence. There's other people and other or organizations using that. But neurosomatic creativity has been trademarked by my company. And what it is, it's the connection between the mind and the brain. Right. They are connected because if things go wrong with your brain, it, it can it affects your cognition, your emotion, emotional regulation and even in your your body. If you understand how like having a stroke, um, things like like that. But neurosomatic creativity is the relationship between the mind, the brain and the body. Right. The brain is embodied. We have to understand that the brain needs our body to get information like what's going on in the outside world. But the brain interprets that. That's why you and I can look at the same painting and have a completely different experience with that piece of art or that object or a person, right? Mm -hmm. Or a situation because our, our brain is, is, is framing it depending on what you and I have gone through in, in the past, which have been completely different experiences. And so neurosomatic creativity is a leadership program that helps leaders and, and just, and, 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 and yeah. Anyone, see, mm -hmm. um, it helps anyone and educators as well. We also have an, a K-12 um, training program is how do we use the arts to increase our creative thinking and leadership skills in non-arts areas? So what the research is showing us, fascinating research, is there's a book called Your Brain on Art. I highly recommend it, especially for people who have an arts background who have been trying to advocate for arts in other areas. Okay. But what we're seeing is that a brain that has exposure, especially earlier on in the lifespan, in your childhood. It's exposure. To Exposure, um, you know, you're producing art, you're singing, dancing, writing poetry, um, okay. musical theater. Um, if it has exposure, there are certain things that are happening to the brain that don't happen in brains that have no exposure or no interaction with the arts. You have your um, cor corpus callosum, which is this middle area that connects both of the hemispheres. If you have a music background, that part usually is, is thicker to get these information across um, between the hemispheres. Musical is bilateral. Um, music is bilateral. So it, it's hitting both sides of the brain at the same time. And so what the last point I'll make is that just as you and I will scream injustice, you know, the kids that you're working with during the uh, Power of We um, yeah. event and things, we, we would scream injustice if they were taken from the ability to read, right? That That is an injustice. Every child should be given the opportunity to learn how, how to read and go to school. What we're finding out is it's almost, to me, it is the same exact level of injustice to take away arts training from a human. Um, number one, we're human. We should be able to express ourselves in multiple ways. But number two, a brain that has been exposed to the arts is way more better. Uh, it's just better connected and able to be agile in different situations, which our future of work really needs right now and leaders really need right now. So to not have the arts as a part of your tool belt is to me an injustice, especially if it's within um, the first 15 years of life. So how do you, do you ever, 
Um, because I'm, you know, a lot of schools, um, uh, primary, uh, with middle school, depending on what part of the country you're in, what to call it, a uh, junior high is another name for it. Um, <laughs> high school, a lot of those programs have gone south. They've they've fallen away. Um, are a lot art, um, music, um, even sports in some districts, unless the kids raise their own money for their own equipment and things like that. So what, why is this happening in your opinion? If this is so important, why are educators and the people that we entrust curriculum and what's right for our kids, why are they allowing the, the arts to just disappear like they don't mean anything, especially when they're one of the things that has lasted the longest in this world? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Well, when you study about a civilization, where do we get most of our information from? It's through the arts. We right. figured out a lot of these these people's ways of love living, you know, their philosophies. It was through the paintings they left on the walls and right. and, and and the music. And we study, you know, you know, I listened to uh, you know music that was written hundreds of years ago. People who are exactly. no longer living, um, they they communicated their their movement through through society and through the times through the arts. So arts is a huge communication piece. But you know, when I was growing up. We did have mu music programs, uh, maybe not everywhere, but definitely maybe my mother's gen generation before that. It was just a it was just a part of of, of life. Of you know? Yeah, you went mm -hmm. to music class once a week. Mm -hmm. You went mm -hmm. to art class once a week. Mm -hmm. Um, in 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 when I was in you know getting up through before sixth grade, you know K mm -hmm. through six. Yeah. But, yes. but again, why is it not? as important now when it should be more important now. Yes, yes. And you know what? Because um, because the fMRI, the neuroscience, this is, a, it's a baby, baby field, right? When you think about all the fields of, of uh, you know, uh, Socrates and all, all of these other psychological fields, um, the fMRIs just really came on board at the late 90s. I was at UCLA 97 to, to 2000, and I remember getting an fMRI because I signed up for my professor's uh, uh, research study. And I would just, you know, be doing tests, and it was new. I didn't know that 23 years later I, I, it would be the, the foundation of my work. But neuroscience, we just really didn't know what was going on in the brain uh, when I was going through school, definitely when, um, you know, when you were going, going through, through, through school. I know, now, back, back in Walnut Grove. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. <laughs> you are, you are a spring chicken. Um, but now, now we know so, so much that um, you're, 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 you're catching it at the beginning of, of, uh, of the new era. That I'm so glad you're, you're helping me share this message because schools. And by the way, California just propped, um, just passed a prop. 28, right? I love the number, the number 28, and I know you and I have talk, talked about num numbers, but it's 28 yes, means like, like um, just new sea seasons, like a new season, right? 2028. Yes. Um, and uh, I think, I don't know if it's a billion dollars, but they- Hold on. Hey, I, I just put that in there. <laughs> um, but they said that um, schools need to have uh, arts instructors in schools. So, you know, normally California and New York are on are normally the first breaking down doors and then the rest of the country kind of follow, um, says, oh, wait, what's what's go going on? So uh, we're looking at that. So but to answer your question, we are at the beginning, the beginning of this huge wave of understanding that the arts are an integral part of a human experience. The leaders of today need to be agile, need to understand how to operate in unknown territories. They need to be able to make connections that no one else sees. They need to be able to make sure their biases and well, assumptions aren't clouding their, yeah. their, their judgment. Yeah. And the arts, the arts train you in all of the 21st century skills, creativity, curiosity, adaptability, self-awareness, resilience, right? You have a whole conference, which I would love to connect with whoever do, doing that, by the way. Oh my God, it was but, but resilience, resilience and regeneration, not just coming back to where you were, but but you know, post-traumatic growth or or going to be better than you were. The arts have that embedded in. Okay. So I want to bring this out because some of you know this. Um, I sing. And back when I, you know, before the album and all that kind of stuff, and you know, you instead of a smoky cafe, 
like a lot of singers, you know, cutting their chops or getting their chops. I actually had like a ministry. It wasn't religious music, but it was like a ministry because of the connection with the elderly people. And I would go to assisted living centers. I would go to nursing homes and they have a big budget, believe it or not, for, and they still have, you know, they still uh, spray paint macaroni gold and glue it on paper plates. They still have music and musicians come in that play instruments and sing and act and all these things for our elderly. One of the only things I think we get right for our elderly because we treat our elderly shittier than most countries. I'm just going to put that out there. And um, so here's what I want to ask you. Do you think, I hope it never comes to that, but do you ever look at that juxtaposition about, well, it's still being somewhat preserved. It's very important in those places with the elderly that they keep those things and they know this. So why is it important? Why is it that they still kind of get it there, but they're losing it on the front end? It yes, makes no yeah. sense to me. I, I, I like that you're bringing up. First of all, we're um, I've, I've, I've been blessed to work with the entire lifespan. You know, I'm an elementary educator by, by trade. Uh, I've done work um, with, you know, infants. And then I have a nonprofit called Alumni 360, which we help sixth through 12th graders. And even in college with life skills, financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and creative literacy. And I taught at University of California State North Northridge. Um, so I've, I've worked, and this is like the same week. I work with a four-year-old to a 64-year-old in the same week. I sure. sat on the board of, of Donors Choose we're the CEO of LinkedIn and senior vice president of Facebook, you know, just like very powerful pe people. And then I'll sit with a student who's on free and reduced lunch like the next day. So I'm just like all over, over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and what we're understanding is first of all, the arts really, it's, it's the gym for the brain. And so we are, talking about, and this may be a topic that you may um, dive into, is the neurodegenerative issue that our nation is having. We're with calling Alzheimer's. it degenerate. Um, no. <laughs> Alzheimer's and, um, and, and just dementia. But, you know, I'm so glad to hear that you saw that because the arts are, are a, the arts and social interaction and challenging yourself, you know, like doing new, new. Yes, things. yes. But yes. they looked at a study of um, nuns who donated their brains and they're like, they could see the effects of the neural degenerative um, effects on the brain, but their behavior showed no effects of the disease. Mm. And so what they're saying is people who stay engaged, socially engaged, artistically engaged, learning a new instrument. You know, now I call it my music homework. My son has to learn the piano and I'm right there with them, right? Because yeah. my trumpet, my, my instrument was at the trumpet. So I was just treble clef. I didn't know how to read uh, bass, bass clef that well. Um, but I know like, hey, if I need to keep my brain sharp, I, I have to do this. I might as well do it with my six-year-old son who has to do it as well. Yeah. And it's so, it's so big that I told my husband, like, reading is important for him, but music in this home, music and, and dancing is just as important as making sure he knows how to read. So to answer your, your question, we need to make sure it's in the elderly environment that we protect their wisdom as well and have them communicate all their wisdom through the arts and have the elderly connect with the youth. That's a big brain um, jump as well. Yes, but yes. I, it's I going agree. to get into the youth, it's going to get into schools. It's it might take a while until we really get the brain research. Say we're we're not giving their brains what they need for yeah. this future of work. Um, but schools are starting to wake up, and I think like that's why I wrote my uh, book, um, uh, my brain, my brain, my beautiful brain. It's, it looks like a children's book, but it's actually for adults as well. Cause in the back, I write to adults of, Hey, what's going on in your, in, in the child's brain, what's going on in your brain? Why is this just important for you as it is for your, your eight, eight year old? Yeah. So what about this? What do you know about this piece? Cause post COVID a lot of kids, well, it was big before, but even more so now. And I'm speaking of homeschooling mm -hmm. and the, the criteria for kids to graduate from homeschool. So, and I have no idea what the answer to this is. So it's not like it's a setup question. I really <laughs> want to know what about there? Um, do, do, do parents add it? Even what I'm getting at is, okay, say in this state, you don't need any arts uh, credits or anything um, for your child to graduate from homeschooling. But should the parents include it anyway? And if so, what are some interesting and unique ways 
to keep that, you know, you know, we're not saying go to Michael's and stock up and you go <laughs> buy a bunch of easels and you got to actually paint and stuff. But what are some of the ways that people might not believe can accomplish what traditionally used to be hands on? What can kids do? For instance, is going to a museum or an immersive experience still fulfilling that need in this corpus callosum and all this that you were speaking of? Yes good, no? good use is a good use of uh, your <laughs> your your def definitions. Um, yeah. I am. This is what neurosomatic creativity is about. I am really communicating that the arts are everywhere and can be found in just you know varied ways. And so, with the curriculum that I'm preparing now, it's for teachers. But actually, that you know, I have to keep thinking that a lot of parents are teachers as well. Well, we are te te teachers, but a lot of parents are homeschooling as well. And I'm so glad that, um, you know, everything is timing. And so my, my son was born at a certain time where he is starting school, right? We are, we are home homeschooling as well, but I get to really ha use him as a case study. So the ways that I want uh, parents and educators to understand is that arts are a, a communicative force. You know, they, they help you express um, a, a concept. And so, you know, I, I just saw a LinkedIn post where Dr. Su Susan who's the author of Your Brain on Art, th that she posted something where these people who wrote their PhD, and you're, you're a doctor, you know, they, they had to um, musically express the findings of their PhD. So this person did a whole video about like kangaroos because that was his dissertation. <laughs> so yeah, he did a whole dancing video. It was and lyrics and everything. Um, and someone else sent me a video of a of a young girl who did a, a song to the the melody of a um, of a Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift song um, about meiosis and mitosis. And what we need to understand is. I just teach the elements, you know, like every yeah. child should know the elements. So music has uh, tempo, pitch, um, form, pattern, right? And the word, the uh, word idea comes yeah. from the Greek. It means form and pattern. So if you're talking about creativity is the number one skill needed in the workforce and creativity is all about ideas, the, the etymology of the word idea is form and pattern. Well, guess what's mm -hmm. in the arts? Forms mm -hmm. and patterns, right? So that's why it's a, it's a no, no brainer, but just to forget, teachers and parents to get creative. So when I take my son to the hotel, because sometimes I travel, well, not sometimes, I travel and speak, and sometimes uh, he comes with me. The, you, you've been in hotels. The lobby is filled with art, right? Yeah. The airport, a lot of airports, Phoenix True. for sure, True. have art sections. Yeah. People walk past them and don't pay attention. They don't True. interact. So I'm observing, of course, I'm aware because it's what I do. But I am training Sean to pay attention to his around surroundings, look at it. Okay, well, what does that mean to me? What is what are what do I think they're trying to? Why did they go to so much to trouble to put that there for us? Yes, yes. And what are they communicating, right? right? And, right. and what does it mean to me at this point in my life? Because what right. it means to you now could be totally different three years from now. Because you'll be a different person three years from now. You would have met different pe people and read different books, and so there is um, that. And just understanding that for parents to understand that this is the toolkit that will help their child um, not just survive, but to thrive in the ever-changing world. So when we shift it and stop seeing the arts as extracurricular fun time, if you have the funds or the, or the time, mm -hmm. and a critical component to help my child think and make sense of, of their experience and to create the new for the experience that they will be in that you and I have no clue what it looks like, mm -hmm. We need to shift our thinking and say that because my son, he can make connections like because because he can hear, you know, I started his music training at negative five months. He was in utero when I started his music class because I was a music teacher. So he had to come with me <laughs> oh. to teach in my womb. Right. And, and, and fetuses can hear about five months. Definitely the last tri tri trimester. They, they can hear um, external yeah. sounds. Yeah. So what about this piece? Because I don't want us to get out of here without this, this entire time, I was like, okay, we're talking about the kids, the babies <laughs> on the left. And then, oh, can't leave out our seniors on the right. Mm -hmm. And then it dawned on me when you were on the screen by yourself solo just a few minutes ago, I was like, well, wait a minute. When was the last time I dipped my finger inside <laughs> of the <this> art? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I did go to the the Picasso immersive thing, but that was like two years ago. I do like to go to community theater and mm -hmm. things like that. So I and I and and that's a thing that I don't do enough, but it's it's like it's almost like salad. You know, you're like, oh, I don't feel like making a salad, but as soon as you make one, you're like, yeah. you eat it first. You're like, oh, this not a good because you're secretly you've been craving it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you go, I got and you and I always say to myself, Oh, I'm gonna do better. Because mm -hmm. clearly my body is like, give me more of this. So that's kind of the feeling I get when we go see Kinky Boots or we go see any any stage performance, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so let's talk about that. How important and what kind of suggestions do you have, mm -hmm. uh, Jenny, for people like myself, um, people like you and like them out there who are in between somewhere uh, and we're thinking this is for everyone other than ourselves? Yes. What yes. are some of the things you do personally? Of uh, just you know, brain capital is a term that people might want to write down and look up. Brain Wait a minute. Capital. Wait, hold on. Before y'all <laughs> write it down, we don't want no lawsuits. It's, it's, not, like it's not trade trademark. Oh, okay, right. um, yeah, ahead, there's a write it down. big group of neural of neuroscientists around the world who are saying it's the brain capital of people um, that will determine, you know, the the thriving of this nation, protecting the brain capital. So they have different pil pil pillars, you know, like um, you know the cultural pillar and and diet right and social interaction and education but one is you know the non cognitive they call it non cognitive but we use cognition for the arts and and these soft skills right that what i call them is essential skills and what we know is that is people in our generations um especially people who are still in leadership positions you're still in the work workforce that yeah adding this type of training and you're, you're talking about exposing arts, right? So you're going to watch the theater, you're going um, in, into these, these areas of just, you know, exposing your, yourself and um, take, does that in. help me build that area though, or maintain it? It, it does because you're you're working on it, but you have to not stop there. Like if you want to be fit, you can't just sit down and watch the Super Bowl. You got to go join a team and, and get out, out there and, and go um, train, right? Yeah. And so it's that same thing. It's that I want to be exposed and to enjoy and to look at the aesthetics, you know, and interact. But I also want to be, be producing. So I'm asking people, where are you producing art? Where are you producing music? And even what you do with, with speaking, like I'm grafting drafting a new keynote um, for the Celebrating the Young Child Conference in Phoenix, Arizona on the 23rd of March. And it's brand new. So I have to sit back, which you've written speeches. You're like, okay, what point am I trying to make? How do I, I section it off so it's 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 digestible? How do I add in a funny story here and then a, a data fact there, maybe a short video here? Because it's a it's a workshop, not not just a key keynote. And that's an art. Like I'm saying, I have this idea, but how do I present it in a in a wonderful so you know, creativity, it sounds yes. like mm -hmm. if you're doing so, you could be writing your memoir. Yes, you could yes. journal. You yes. could do a vision board. Yes, yes, where you're producing. In fact, I just interviewed for my podcast a man named Mike Dottery who um, just wrote his his book, um, and and he's uh, in his sixties, you know, and this is his first book. And I just wanted to say, you know, I appreciate Michael, you doing this. I know a guy with yes. that name. Yes, yes, and yeah. <laughs> no, I do. He, uh -huh. he was yours a um, a parole officer or something. No, like that? no, he, he was. A lawyer, okay. um, and and yeah, right. a little bit uh, something if we yeah, didn't know that. Because we have a lot of connections. Apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I just wanted to am, to amplify his story because I needed people to see that um, no matter where you are in your phase of life, creativity is so important. You telling your story or a story, whether it be through the written word, through dance, through music, these are just um, uh, these are just methods and and vessels to carry what, an idea. What about things like? people who have a green thumb and they like to grow things. Yes. So I have a green room and I have things in those are my babies or, or people that like to cook. cook. I love to cook, cook. and it's cathartic and, mm -hmm. and I, and, and I get creative. I may follow a recipe as a skeleton piece, but I'm going to add this and mm, mm -hmm. we'll eat a little and bit. And you're using your senses. Exactly. And being creative. So mm -hmm. what about the, do those pieces help yes. as well? Yes, yes. And it's all important. Now, I will say things such as music, they're actually um, a set of neurons that only get activated when you are producing mus music. Producing or, or engaging. 
Because what if you go to line dance class? What if you... Well, that's dance too. And there's your your cerebellum, right? Your Ah. cerebellum helps with balance. But here's the thing. Your cerebellum helps with walking and balance and you're doing it when you're dancing. But they just found out that it also monitors your prefrontal cortex and make sure your prefrontal cortex is, which is where you do your decision making, your imagination. So when you are line dancing, you're actually helping yourself think better. That's why if you get stuck on a problem, you kind of want to get up and walk around, right? That's your body telling you, I need to move to think, right? Sir Ken Robinson said that in his TED talk. She needs, um, she needed to move to think, and yeah. so it all matters. Uh, Just all matters. That, but so I will say, wait. if you could try to do a, a musical instrument, try it. So that's why I pace. Yes. When yes. I am working and thinking and, and creating, I pace constantly back, forth, back. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, your cerebellum. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That's really interesting. Really, I gotta ask you one other piece. We got five minutes left. I wanna ask you this. Um, because for instance, uh, my husband and I, Brian, we love America's Got Talent, and one of our favorite people to ever come through there is Cody Lee, neuro divergent. He okay. is. Mm-hmm. he's on the spectrum and he is just incredibly talented. Now, mm-hmm. there was once a time where people just say, Oh, they're like the rain man, that kind of thing, when they can just like sit down and be a prodigy. This and mm-hmm. the other. And since you're, you know, neurosomatic, neurodiversity, talk about um, how this has helped people that fall into specific categories of development. You know yes. what I'm saying, real quick? <laughs> um, how it, it's proven that if it works, it works everywhere. It's yes. not picky. Yeah. So in case people want a resource, there's a wonderful book called The Leader's Brain by Dr. Michael Platt. Uh, And in his last chapter, he has a chapter just for that, how we need to look at and and we need to be we are when we say neurotypical. The thing is, everyone's brain is different because we've all had different experiences. Mm. Right. So Mm. it's shaping the neural structures of our brain differently. Now, there are um, uh, uh, the situation where, where the brain um, does have it maybe on the spectrum as well. And for that, you know, Dr. Michael Platt was just saying that um, there's just different ways that they shine. We all shine diff, diff, differently, right? Shine, shine bright. And just getting uh, people who, who, who may be neurodivergent in places where they can grow. And that's why prismatic le- leadership is so important because a great leader is observant and they're sensitive to say, okay, well, where are their strengths and, and what position can I put them in where their strengths can, can shine. And that's where a lot of self-awareness comes in. And we don't teach self-awareness in K-12, right? We need to have kids be able to say, Hey, this is what's going on on the inside. This is where I'm, I'm strong. This is where I'm weak, where I may want to just test it out to see if they if, 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 if there's something there, you know, um, that's really what childhood is about, right. To, to, to test these things out and to see where, where you're calling, right. Um, calling is, so you're not in a job that does not fit you, even if it's entrepreneurship or, or if it's um, a job for an organization. So, but we do have to understand that all brains are different. Yeah. Culture is a huge thing. You know, you and I can grow up in the same household, but have two different experiences. If um, something, another lens um, may, may have been different. Like my exactly twin, right. she's an astrophysics major. My brother works for NASA. He's a mathematician and I'm over here, elementary ed, you know, same household, uh, completely different um, lenses because we were trained to think different within our our profession mm. so that 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 colors the way you see the world um even though we are we're, we're twins right yeah. so just keeping all that of that in mind that everyone everyone is a diamond and has diamond gifts within them the mm. best leaders for this next era are the ones who are observant they're empathetic and they're open-minded right this is why my work talks about inclusion and diversity work because sure. it is it affects creative thinking. Yeah, and and that's that's going to be the the mission of this next decade for sure. I love it. Listen, man, what an informative and empowering hour it has been. I want to <laughs> thank you, uh, Janine Leffer, uh, for everything you poured in and for all the things that we didn't get to. But now, because of what we see scrolling along the bottom and sitting on the screen, those two roads to Janine's work are available, free. We love free, so get <laughs> over and take advantage. There's so much on the website uh, that you, I can't even get into it all. Go over there, 
take your spiritual metal detector and just keep scanning the sand, the dirt, the bushes. You're going to come out with your pockets full of value. And that is a promise from me to you. Now, listen, Janine, again, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you so, so much. Um, you all out there, listen, thank you for everything you do. And thank you for being here. And thank you for the, the friends of Janine and supporters who came for the first time. God bless you. Thank you. I hope to see you again. And as far as seeing people again, how about tomorrow? If you're up for it, I will be, God willing, I'll meet you right over there on the front porch where together we'll have yet another illuminated conversation. And remember, I say it all the time as we get out of here. I love, 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 love you. Was that too many loves? I don't think so. I love you, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. So there. Janine, listen, real quick. If if you had to give one line to people that you would hope they would never forget about this kind of work and why it's so, so very important, what would you leave them with? Jerry Springer moment. Yes, that your diamonds aren't just for you. They're for us to, to shine bright as well. So give us what you got, and let's have fun while doing it. There you go. Oh, big piece right there. Listen, have fun. Get out there today. Reach for your highest self. You might be surprised what you come home with. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best day ever. Jenny, great job. Great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh